She sings Middle Eastern. There's just no end to her. She oh, it's four, just four beautiful. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anybody that does what she does and all the different instruments she plays. And yeah, now she, she's back from tour. So watch the papers. I believe she currently appears with the Quinary Underground. So if you look in the paper, you might be able to to catch her in concert. Just just incredible. Yes, mm -hmm. she is. Yeah, I'd like to go see her. Personally, mm -hmm. I had a call from a man named Walter, and he said it just moved him to tears. So I like to acknowledge Walter today, and mm -hmm. I'm glad that you could enjoy that. And then the next one well, is. Well, we haven't got there yet, Tammy. Oh, okay. We're still on Beth Christ here. And um, I'm not sure, but I think she plays at least five or six instruments. And she's very tall. Just an incredible person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we air this ever so often, so you'll, you'll just see her again. And uh, I believe she lives in Seattle at this time. And um, check the performing arts. I think she's scheduled there for early 2002. Mm -hmm. 2002. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, there you go. Okay, this would be the musical journey with Beth Quest. No, we are now on Moya Soleil, the fusion group from Zambia. Um, and we also had a workshop performance at the end of the show. The lady you see there, her name is Moya Kashimbe. And um, the name of the band is Moya Soleil. We thought you might enjoy that clip, I know. Um, I know some of, the, some of the friends did. Yes, I thought it was very interesting too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They don't always come in and, a circular uh, uh, type um, The crop formation. circle and is worth so talking about because it, it came in on is, and I think I'm gonna, the 19th um, of August. And unfortunately, nobody else talked about it. But it was about the biggest thing that happened in my lifetime. Yes. And when you go to the market, um, you know, you can read up on some of these things. It was actually the return of the SIBO message. That's a message we sent into space in the 70s. Mm-hmm, then it came back. It came back yes. in the form of a crop circle. Mm -hmm. So that's really worth, um, I might do a whole show on that one day um, because it was so important yes, in the it year is. 2001. Mm -hmm. um, like you can see here, it came in in a field um, the face on one side and the uh, and the, the message on the other side, and that was one of the big things uh, from the year 2000. And here's Moya Kashimbe again. Yeah, they came from Makotio at that time, I believe. And um, music shows were good. Yes. Yeah, I enjoyed those. So, did you have any favorites? Of oh, the, of these, uh, uh, well, I always enjoy a Kenoshiba song. Um, mm -hmm. I, I like them all. You I like, like them hard, all. I think Best Quest would have to be my favorite. Favorite. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, last year it was uh, the Primal Scream. Remember? Yes, mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. a good one. But that was the year before, so we're right. just covering two thousand and one. Don't know where the year went. It goes by fast. It became apparent that some of the subjects we could no longer cover because we had a new president, we had new rules. Uh, our local earthquake happened, which uh, I lost my home and I had to relocate. And 9-11 uh, happened. And so, um, we had to find other ways to, to get our footage. Um, in the beginning, um, some of the friends um, got together and they, they donated their frequent flyer miles and, uh, and they would bring uh, whoever I wanted to talk to, they would all chip in and with frequent flyer miles and, uh, and bring the people to me. The smokers got to stay with me and the non-smokers had to uh, Save us some non-smoking friends, of course. 
and so um so in by the end of 2001 we had to make some changes like i said we couldn't talk about a lot of the things because we all went into this paranoid mode if you remember and um earlier in uh early in 2000 um i found some shows uh, that i was would not have been comfortable with um at the station because i didn't know if um I was allowed to talk about these things so we changed the format and and named them Sigeria instead of uh, a visit with a person of high strangeness in order to do that I went to Colorado to a friend that had a studio and uh, we filmed some things there and then I kind of tested the water a little bit and uh, used bits and pieces of those inserts to uh, to present to you but 2001 was a little it was the beginning of things getting a little touchy. But we went right ahead, um, full steam, and held our breath <laughs> sometimes because we figured, oh wow, we're going to hear about this because we wasn't really sure. A new word, uh, a new word came in, it was called politically obscene, um, but we couldn't talk about a lot of things. So we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to show you all the things we put together for you in 2002. and. Um, yeah, it got touchy every once in a while, but we went ahead anyway. And so enjoy the insert for 2002. See you a little later. Ivan, Ivan von Kwiatkowski, I probably said that wrong. Uh, he explained to us the different words, uh, what it means to be in war, also what a freedom fighter is and things like that in order to prepare us for what is about to uh, come next. Uh, he was very knowledgeable uh, because of his background and you all enjoyed that very much. In fact, the Tacoma paper, we made the front page with that one. This year we built a garden in, the, in the, my backyard, a young man named Jackson and um, of course Nevada, the big iguana that uh, sat on the other side of the parking lot and watched this garden grow that so many of you uh, enjoyed. And uh, we were happy to acknowledge some of those volunteers because they go and build gardens for low income and, uh, and uh, some of the seniors that wouldn't have a garden any other kind of way. And then this is Nevada here. Uh, watching the whole operation and he was a big hit. Um, this show here, we did a whole series on Roswell. That was the closing and uh, it was done so well. I wanted to show it to you again. Uh, that was the cover. Um, well, it's downtown Roswell and our friends there it was the cover of a magazine from the uh, Better Business Bureau of Roswell. Um, here we went to the Cahokia Mounds and uh, met up with a young woman named Lynn Marie. We talked about indigo children. She lives in Minnesota and drove through rain and snow to meet up with me in Pocahontas at what is now the Lighthouse Lodge. I tell you that story later. And met me there and uh, did a couple of shows. This young man, Gus Malone, has the Alien Resistance Center in Roswell, uh, excuse me, in Roswell, New Mexico, directly across from the UFO Museum, and he was a delightful young man with a with a different outlook on the alien agenda. Um, this was a crop circle that had appeared. Um, look, they're interfering with it. Wow, cool. It was a humanoid face, as you can see, and a lot of writing which later turned out it was the return of the Acebo message some uh, that's it right there where we had sent messages in the space and it's interfering see it's doing something how cool and we had shared that with you it not too much was said about that this is the front of the UFO museum in in Roswell where we took you on uh, actually three shows. We took you to the actual town and talked to the locals and we went to the museum and this is the front. Monica Ryan Smith uh, right there 
and this is the UFO Museum. Walter Hart is one of the directors. It later turned out he is also the gentleman, um, at the time unknown to me, that dropped the equipment into the atomic bloom when they tested the atom bomb in the Pacific. This is last year's end of the year show with Tammy Bauer, where we took you through the whole year like we always do. And this is the service announcement. Uh, I'm real partial to I really, really like it that we ran on TCTV uh, throughout the year, and I'm seriously thinking of making this my permanent opening shot because I liked it. It was real, well, different and strange. So we show you that again. Uh, Tantra Bensko. Peter Moon, our friend from uh, New York, introduced us. She is now an uh, Olympia resident, and she is a very famous and wonderful artist. And we picked some of the masks and paintings that she had. This is Jim Mars, author of Rule by Secrecy. Um, this was a satellite interview. Uh, he lives in Dallas, and we were very, very honored to have been able to bring you his uh, interview and his outlook on things. I later got to spend a week with him. Here we taught you how to do the salsa. Um, Rico Brava is the young champion here. These are his parents that are also his coaches and managers. They came to the studio, and here the young champion is dancing with his mother. And right about then, we were kind of, uh, it, it was just wonderful. We got a little tired. So I think today I'll close the show with us all dancing, so you have an idea who that is. Isn't he gorgeous? Just a wonderful young man. And uh, his beautiful mother, I can't remember her name, unfortunately. And so we just danced the night away and showed people how to do the salsa. And it was a big hit and stop. See, we have to put... So here you see us all sitting and discussing uh, some of the moves for the young people and the old folks. And we just had a wonderful time. This is the Fun Zone in Vasco, New Mexico. It's a it's a t-shirt shop, or so it appears. Then you buy a pass for eight dollars and you go into this wonderful world of aliens and there were so many but I picked my favorites. I, I think this one really was my favorite and you just go to this world of aliens and that's a display inside. This is the actual station in Roswell where the, the crash of the UFO had been reported. It is now property of the UFO Museum. And uh, we played the whole broadcast for you at that time. And uh, it, uh, there's a recreation, but that is the actual uh, station, the way it, what it looked like at that time. When they said we had seen dummies falling out of airplanes and weather balloons, well, there's the dummy. I thought the dummy to be short, it later turned out was almost six feet. This is the prop from the movie Roswell that was donated by the producers of the movie to the UFO Museum. And it was a very, very popular exhibit, so if you get a chance to visit, and some paintings. To sort out all the madness we had sent you through, we got Catherine Peel to come back, uh, the scientist that works with mental, uh, actually emotional intelligence. And she had finished her two years of research and came and shared with us what she knew. This is Ivan again, where he told us about the profiling of the Afghanistan people from a military uh, and strategic point of view, and that was very interesting also. We had lots of calls. Electra Ahn, our friend that is in her high 80s, uh, we met up 
in Cahokia, Illinois, and climbed the mountains there. And uh, this is an interview where she.